How many of you just hate waiting? Anybody? Yeah, me too. We have to wait for things all the time. It can be a ride at any amusement park, concert tickets, Christmas morning, or even the little typing at home when somebody's texting us. Sometimes, waiting can feel like an eternity, especially when it's something we really, really want. Has anyone ever made your promise that you didn't have to wait for? Maybe they promised to give you something, do something for you, help you with something, or simply show up and spend time with you. But what happens when that promise gets delayed? And delayed again, and again, and again. Soon, we start to wonder if it's ever going to happen at all. Or if we should just give up hope. It's a feeling a lot of us in this room can identify with. And for some of us, it's because we have been waiting on God. In our lives, and in our faith, there are a lot of things we wish could happen instantly. There are promises we want to be fulfilled right away. Instead, let's wait for it. In my life, I've had to wait for many things. I once had to wait for a game console. I'd waited years for it and wondered if I was ever going to get it at all. But in the end, the wait was worth it. While you wait, we should continue to serve the Lord, pray, and go on with our daily lives. But in human nature, we start to get frustrated and ask questions. We might wonder, can God really be trusted? Does God really care? If God really loved me, then why do I, as God's child, have to wait so long for? Well, if any of y'all in this room feel like you're waiting on God right now, good, good news is that you are not alone. The Bible's filled with stories of people who had to wait on God. Genesis 12, 1 through 3 says, the Lord said to Abraham, leave your country and your people. Leave your father's family and go to the place I will show you. I will build a great nation from you. I will bless you and make your name famous. People will use your name to bless others. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you. I will use you to bless all the people on earth. See, Abraham was just an ordinary guy, but this is no ordinary promise. This is the big promise for Abraham. There was one small problem. Abraham didn't have any descendants. His wife, Sarah, was unable to have any children, and they were both pretty old. Abraham was stuck waiting to receive what God had promised. He didn't have a timeline or a plan, just a promise. He was officially on the wait list. After years of waiting for a promise from a God that was still learning to trust, I'm pretty sure Abraham himself felt discouraged and impatient. Then finally, after 25 long years of waiting for God's plan to come to pass, Sarah gave birth to Isaac, the promised son. I don't know what promises you're waiting on right now or what promises you're going to have to wait for in the future, but here's one thing that I do know. God can be trusted. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your paths straight. Not in curse, but perfectly straight. Like Abraham and Sarah, who had waited for years for God to give them a child, here's a message you and I often need to hear. God has a plan but we might have to wait for it. When God makes a promise, the plan he has in mind is way better than anything you or I could ever imagine. So what are you waiting for? Something to change in your heart? Something to change in your life? A prayer to be answered? Well, here's what we can learn from the story of Abraham and Sarah. While we are waiting, God can be trusted. Thank you.